Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oral, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Today, we're going to talk about another childhood favorite author of mine, Beatrix Potter. Beatrix was an English writer, illustrator, natural scientist, and conservationist, best known for her children's books featuring animals, such as those in The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Born into a privileged household, Potter was educated by governesses and grew up isolated from other children. She had numerous pets and spent holidays in Scotland and the Lake District. Developing a love of landscape, flora, and fauna, all of which she closely observed and painted. Though Potter was typically a woman of her generation and having limited opportunities for higher education, her study in watercolors of fungi led to her being widely respected in the field of mycology. In her 30s, Potter self-published the highly successful children's book, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. She began writing and illustrating children's books full-time. Potter wrote about 30 books, the best known being her 23 children's tales. Now, like most children, I was first introduced to Beatrix Potter's stories back during my elementary years. Not just from reading said stories, but also from watching the World of Peter Rabbit and Friends series, which ran from 1992 to 1995. The series starred Niamh Cusack as a live-action Beatrix Potter telling her stories while writing letters to children. And to me, this series is a childhood wonder, especially with the beautiful Perfect Day song sung by Miriam Stockley. Also, after re-watching the series on YouTube, I'm surprised that the series featured many different big-named English actors, like Richard Griffiths, Ian Holm, and Rydell, Hugh Laurie, Rick Mayall, Pam Ferris, and others, before they got to be in such big hits of today. Also, during my youth, I did write a book report about Beatrix Potter's life, and in my eyes, I could tell that Beatrix really loved animals and the countryside. Plus, her life story was very tear-jerking. Same goes for the movie, Myth Potter. What's more, in 1996, I received this bookmark from an actress portraying as Beatrix at a library near La Paz. Also, you may remember about two years ago, when I blogged You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, I did mention that I played Lias with my theater friends. And I still can't believe that I had to say two monologues during the book report song. Also, I heard that Nickelodeon made a TV series which focuses on Beatrix's star Rabbit. Which I haven't really watched yet. <clears throat> However, for today's blog, we're going to look into a recent movie which stars Peter and his friends from Beatrix Potter stories. But I wonder, is this movie as bad as trailers portrayed it to be? Or is it better than viewers think? Well, let's find out. Released on February 9th, 2018, the movie is Peter Rabbit. Now let's get started. In this movie, Peter Rabbit's feud with the McGregor family reaches new heights as he and Thomas McGregor compete for the affections of a kind animal lover who lives next door. So, what are my thoughts? Well, at first, after seeing the trailer, I thought it would be a complete disaster, but after seeing the movie, it was actually better than I thought it'd be, though not perfect. 
But in order to explain, let's move on to Mustang Notes. The movie was first revealed in April 2015 through email leaks as a result of the Sony Pictures hack. The official announcement of the film came that December. On April 4, 2016, it was reported that Will Gluck, the director of the stupid 2014 adaption of Annie, will be directing the live action slash animated film from a script by Gluck and Rob Libber. Gluck will also be producing the movie along with Zara Nalbian of Amalogic, which will be providing the visual effects and animation for the movie. On December 18, 2016, the first image of the title character along with the movie's logo had been revealed. Live action scenes were filmed in Sensual Park in Sydney. In March 2017, filming took place at Central Railway Station, Sydney, which was depicted as London Paddington Station. In April 2017, a film crew were seen in Ambleside and Windermere in the Lake District. A local toy shop on Copston Road, Ambleside, was adapted to be Mr. McGregor's. Now, to me, the story, while a tad over-the-top and sometimes crude, was pretty good. Because, one, there were parts that referenced the stories, like Peter losing his jacket, followed by it being hung on a scarecrow. Two, there were parts that showed some hand-drawn animated illustrations from the stories, as well as the death of Peter's father. And three... There were several characters that I recognized, like Jeremy Fisher, Jemima Puddle Duck, Mr. Todd, Pingling Bland, Johnny Town Mouse, and of course, Mrs. Tiggy Winkle, who in this movie is voiced by Sia. <laughs> kind of interesting that she has gone from Songbird Serenade in the My Little Pony movie to this. I also like the setting in the country, which is really beautiful. Also, the setting in London is very nostalgic due to the fact that I visited this city back in summer 2010. Plus, I'm surprised that Harrods, a department store that my mom and two of my aunts used to work at a long time ago, was featured in this movie. On the other hand, while the comedy was really hilarious, it kind of goes a bit too far at times, with stuff like electric doorknobs, rakes, syringes, and explosives, which is something that I know Beatrix Potter would never include in any of her stories. Plus, some parts of the movie made me think of Animal Farm, Home Alone, the Goonies, and ugh, The Simpsons. Anyway, now that we're done with Mustang Notes, let's move on to the characters and the actors. Our main character, Peter Rabbit, is voiced by James Corden, whom I remember from Into the Woods, DreamWorks Trolls, and the Emoji Movie. Now, like in the book, Peter is a very mischievous rabbit. However, in my opinion, at first, I didn't really like the idea of Peter sounding like a grown-up. But, after reading the tale of Mr. Todd, and as I was watching the movie, I started to understand why. But anyway, sometimes Peter can be a bit over the top with his mischief, like when he fights McGregor like a kangaroo, and when he accidentally activates the explosives, which ends up knocking down his tree. Next up we have B, played by Rose Bryan. 
B is a kind animal lover who lives in a beautiful house near Peter's tree. In my opinion, B is like a modern day version of Beatrix Potter, since she looks after Peter and his sisters since their parents passed away. Also, in my opinion, B's art, while a few may be a bit strange, the other paintings that she has is very reminiscent to Beatrix Potter's book illustrations. Next, we have Thomas McGregor, played by Tom Hall Gleason, who got to be in Harry Potter 7 Part 1 and 2, and the newer Star Wars movies. Thomas is Mr. McGregor's great nephew, a new farmer who seeks to be rid of Peter and his mischievous acts so that he can sell his great uncle's house and build his own toy store to rival the one he previously worked at. In my opinion, while Thomas was at Harrods, he seemed like a great helper. Unfortunately, when he didn't get the promotion that he wanted, he throws a tantrum and ends up getting fired. On the other hand, Thomas is very sympathetic. Next, we come to Peter's old nemesis and Thomas's great uncle, Mr. McGregor, played by Sam Neill, best known from Jurassic Park. In my opinion, Mr. McGregor isn't too different from his book counterpart, but after so many attempts to catch Peter, McGregor comes down with a heart attack and dies. Next, we have Peter's sisters, Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, voiced by Daisy Ridley, Margaret Robbie, and Elizabeth Debicki. In my opinion, these three rabbits are a lot different than the way they were in the books, mostly because they joined Peter in stealing food and conquering the garden. Also, they remind me of the pink berets from Hop. Plus, Cottontail is described as a loose cannon, Flopsy is nervous and awkward, and Mopsy is the feisty and stubborn out of the three. Finally, we have Peter's cousin and Flopsy's husband, Benjamin Bunny, voiced by Colin Moody. Who was in the third Narnia movie? To me, Benjamin may be a bit clumsy. He does his best to help Peter go down a straight path. Also, in my opinion, the only flaw with Benjamin is that his ears are mostly droopy in this movie compared to his book counterpart. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Peter Rabbit may be an okay film, but I can't say that it doesn't have its flaws. The movie is by all means not perfect or a masterpiece. While I do applaud this movie for referencing many of Beatrix Potter's stories, as well as featuring many of her characters, the comedy, while hilarious, was mostly silly, embarrassing, or overall unnecessary. The setting in the country is very beautiful to say the least. Plus, the voice acting on Peter and his sisters were pretty good too. And I like that this movie gave Peter a caretaker in the form of the beautiful bee, and the villain Thomas, while mostly a jerk, was very sympathetic. Still, if you want to watch a good version of Beatrix Potter's stories, there's always the World of Peter Rabbit and Friends series. And if you'd like to watch a film based on Beatrix's life, Miss Potter is also a good choice. But if you'd like to watch something different, though over-the-top crazy and hilarious, but references her stories, then Peter Rabbit might be the movie for you. I give this film a rating of 71% out of 100. Well, that's all for today, everyone. Be sure to join me on Valentine's Day for my next blog.
Mustang Power.